and I I think I, I will start. So uh, please uh, feel free to ask me any questions whenever you have. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Thanks for coming to my today's talk. Let me introduce myself. I'm Xiao Zhou Feng, a postdoc from uh, UT Austin. Today, I will talk about my recent work about charge and spin sharpening transitions on dynamical quantum trees. Okay, our paper has been posted on archive. So if you are interested in it, please read it for more details. At the beginning, I want to introduce uh, my collaborators. This work is in the collaboration with Nadia and Theron from Princeton and Mathieu from UT Austin. And today, uh, this topic will be closely related to the concept of measurement induced state transition, which has been a fast developing topic for the past years. But I still want to give you a very brief review about this concept. Uh, let's consider we have a 1D QB uh, chain as shown by the, the figure on the left. And suppose I'm allowed to apply some random dynamics on the system here. Each green block will represent some random unitary gates. And I start with a product state. After some time, if I separate my system to two parts, A and B, I can ask the following question. What will be the subsystem entanglement entropy between A and B? And the sub entanglement entropy will be defined in this form with row A as the partial A trace density matrix. And uh, it turns out that this entanglement entropy will grow linearly to the time. We start with the product state, so we will have zero entanglement between the subsystems, and it will grow linearly until it reach a saturated value. And we will find that this saturated value will be proportional to our system set L, in this case, we will see that we have a volume of scaling. And furthermore, I can ask a more interesting question, what will happen if we now I have some uh, measurements inside my dynamics? Here, we still look at this picture, and now I have some gray circle represent the random measurement. I will assume that at each time slice, I will measure each qubit uh, randomly with the probability P. Now I still separate my system to two parts, A and B. I want to ask, okay, what will be the entanglement entropy between A and B? And it turns out this uh, problem becomes more interesting. In fact, we will have a phase transition. And this phase transition is characterized by entanglement entropy. You will not be able to observe it by simply using the excitation value of some observables. And it was first studied in this work. Basically, people found that by uh, tuning in this uh, measurement uh, probability P, when P is small, we will stay in a phase. We still have the um, volume law. But when P is large enough, we will enter a phase where the saturated value will be independent of our system size. So we call that now we have the area of scaling. And when we allocate at the critical point, and the saturated value will be give you a algorithmic uh, scaling. And the field transition by tuning this environment probability P will be called measurement induced uh, phase transition. One important uh, property about the measurement induced phase transition is related to the purification process. If we look at the phase diagram, we start with a product state and we consider the subsystem entanglement entropy. Then by tuning this measurement probability P, we will have two phases. We will have a phase where we have the volume law, so we call it entangling phase. And in the other phase, we will have the area law, so we call it disentangling phase. And now people are say, what will happen if I still have the same quantum circuit, but now I have a, a maximum mean state at the initial state instead? And now we consider the total entropy of the final state. Basically, people find that um, uh, with the time goes, the initially a massive mis mistake will become a uh, pure and a pure. But there will be a phase that this purification takes the time scale uh, exponential to the system size. And there will be another phase where uh, this uh, purification takes the time scale, which is an algorithmic of the system size. And there will be a critical point separating these two phases. But the interesting thing is that Gumas and Hughes prove in this paper that in many cases, and the critical point of this purification phase transition 
will coincide with the critical point of the previous measurement induced field transition. So this uh, means that this purification field transition is an equivalent way to study the measurement induced field transition in many cases. And in terms of all that, you, uh, in many problems, the purification process will be easier to consider. So this provides us with a, a powerful tool. And in fact, in my talk, I will also use uh, this purification process. Okay, so far I talk, gave you a very brief review about the measurement induced field transition. Uh, usually, uh, when people consider this problem, we assume some random unitary gates, but we do not ask the dynamics to have some symmetry. But you know that in many physics systems, uh, we can generally have some uh, symmetry. For instance, we can have some U1 symmetry, so we will have the conserved total charge. And then it's natural to ask what will happen if we have the dynamics obey this uh, U1 symmetry. And it turns out that now the fifth diagram will be enriched. There will be a new kind of field transition, which is determined by our vulnerability of the final U1 charge using the measurement outcome. To better explain it, let's look at uh, this uh, uh, quantum circuit. Here we still have the unitary gates and measurements, but now I ask the dynamics to maintain the U1 rotation around the Z direction. Then the Z component will behave like my U1 charge. I will assume all the green blocks, this unitary gates, and all the green circles, the measurements to maintain this uh, total U1 charge. Suppose I start with uh, interstate as a superposition of all possible B strings. So each one will give you a determinant total charge. I can ask, okay, after you know, long enough time, will my initial state be collapsed by the measurements to a state which has determined um, total charge? Uh, on the right, I have a simpler uh, example. If, if my initial state will just be a superposition of two states with different charge, here I will use the black circle to represent the charge. Then I can ask after some time by acting this uh, quantum circuit, will I finally get a state which has determined the charge? Or I still get some state which I still have some uncertainty about the charge due to the superposition, just like my initial state. And this um, problem uh, was studied uh, in this nice paper. Basically, people find that by tuning our measurement probability P, there will be two phases. We will have a fuzzy phase. We still have uncertainty about the lifetime charge uh, for a long time. But there also will also be a sharp phase where we will quickly uh, collapse the initial state to a state with determinant charge. And the field transition separating the fuzzy phase and the sharp phase will be called the charge sharpening phase transition. And furthermore, uh, in that paper, people also show that uh, when the local Hilbert's dimension D goes to infinity, uh, we will have a nice statistical picture about this charge sharpening phase transition. Before I consider the QB systems, but in fact, we can ask the local Hilbert's dimension to be larger than two, and we can have more actual degrees about the dynamics. And this will be captured by D. When D goes to infinity, people find that the dynamics of the charge will behave like a simple exclusion process. Since we have had the mean circuit measurements, so it will fix the charge at a specific time on a specific site. So this behaving like some constraints about the random workers in this simple exclusion process. So the charge sharpening transition will be understood and literally by this uh, constrained simple exclusion process. However, also we have this nice picture when D equals to infinity, there is no analytical understanding about the physics uh, for finite D yet. Here we talk about uh, the charge sharpening transition. We have this uh, begin U1 symmetry. Then it is natural to ask, what will happen if we have a continuous symmetry obeyed by dynamics, but it becomes non-abelian, such as we have the SU2 symmetry. In this recent work, um, people consider this problem. They consider a 1D QB uh, system, but now at uh, this time, each uh, unitary gate will maintain a uh, global SU2 symmetry. I, uh, I will talk about uh, the form of this gate later, and for, to maintain this SU2 symmetry, uh, we further require that all the mean circuit uh, measurement have to be a two qubit measurement S1 dot S2. So it measures the total uh, spin of these two qubits. Then I can start with a uh, initial state, which is a superposition of states with different total spin. I can ask after long enough time, will I get a state which has determined the total spin or not? 
However, it turns out that uh, this problem becomes much complicated than the previous one. The reason is that uh, the SU2 symmetry is non abelian It cannot be easily studied as a abelian case. So far, uh, in this paper, basically, they just have some uh, numerical results uh, showing a uh, phase transition. And these are some figures I get from uh, this paper. And you can see that the system size is uh, small. This is due to the limitation of about our ability to simulate the dynamics. And, but we still have some evidence about the crossing which suggests uh, the phase transition. And people find that uh, there will be a phase when P is small, and the time scale about the sharpening of the spin will be the cube of the system size L. Uh, when P is large enough, uh, there, there will be a phase where the time scale of the sharpening of spin will be the square of the system set L. However, uh, although we have some numerical evidence about the uh, uh, spin sharpening field transition, uh, uh, there is no efficient analytical understanding established yet. Since you know the uh, projector of uh, uh, different outcomes, they do not commute with each other due to the property about the SU2 symmetry, and uh, you cannot have the uh, like marrying all the uh, charge at the same time. And this uh, forbid us to get a nice statistical picture like the U1 case. So uh, in my today's talk, I want to provide with more understanding about both the charge sharpening transition and spin sharpening transition. But we have seen that in the 1D case, uh, it turns out uh, this is a challenging task. To overcome um, this difficulty, I will want to use a different architecture. So I will turn to the so-called quantum tree model. Basically, you can think of it like acting a tree-like transfer network on some initial state. Here, my time direction can go either from the bottom to the top if uh, I keep discarding qubits, or from the top to the bottom if I keep adding the qubits. These two different processes will define two different kind of quantum tree model. I will talk both of them in my today's talk. The quantum dynamics in a quantum tree model was first studied uh, in this paper. Basically, people consider uh, the final density matrix on the top of the tree. They want to ask the purity of uh, this uh, top uh, density matrix by changing either the measurement probability or the measurement strength of the uh, weak measurement. If it, and it turns out that so we will see a phase transition from a phase where uh, the top QB will still be mixed even your system size goes to infinity to a phase where your uh, top QB will become pure and pure by increasing the system size. And usually uh, considering the tree model will give us more uh, ability to get some analytical understanding. And also uh, it turns out that it will really is easier to uh, simulate the dynamics than in the 1D case. So I hope that by considering the charge and spin sharpening transitions on the tree model, we will get uh, more understanding. Okay, now let me uh, introduce our first part, our quantum tree model with the U1 symmetry. We will call it a collapsed quantum tree since you can see that with the time direction goes, the, our system set will become smaller and smaller. And uh, on each side, I will have a two-level system coupled with an actual D-level system. This two-level system will behave like my uh, charge, so I can define the total uh, U1 charge by the three components of this two-level system. And each blue block will be a random unitary gate which maintain uh, this uh, total U1 charge. And the red and pink block will be some projective measurements which have the U1 symmetry. So it will measure this uh, two level system along the Z direction, and it will also measure this D level system along some arbitrary direction. Uh, I will use this red block to discard half of the system size, and for the pink block, it will have the probability P to apply uh, this um, measurement. Uh, depending on my the choice of my initial state, I can study uh, both the purification process or the charge sharpening process. I, I will be interested in the final density matrix on the top of the tree. Here, when D is one, so we just have the qubit degree left. Uh, I gave uh, the example of the interstates. 
And when we have the uh, incoherent initial state, which is the method miss state, we will consider the purification process. But when we have a coherent initial state, which uh, is a product state of a state state, uh, we will consider uh, the charge sharpening process. And first, uh, as D equals one, uh, our numerical results about the state transitions are uh, summarized in this plot. Here, uh, the nice thing about the connect tree is that we can efficiently simulate the dynamics. We can easily go to very large system size. And the blue curve will represent the purification process, and the red curve will represent our charge sharpening process. We will use the quantity we call Z to characterize this phase transition. So now let me introduce the concept of Z. In the purification process, uh, on each node, we will have generally a mixed state density matrix will be described by this uh, by a vector r. And we can plot uh, this density matrix in the box sphere. And we define the uh, z value uh, as shown by the by this figure. So you can think that z will be the one half of the difference between one and r. So basically, z tells you how mixed your state is, is, it is. When z is 0, you will have a pure state. When z is uh, one half you have a maximum mixed state. Uh, and for the charge sharpening transition, we generally have a pure state on each node of my tree. But I, I can still use the box sphere to describe uh, this impure state. This time I will define the z value to be the minimum between the squares of the two coefficients. Here I gave a choice of the uh, angle theta, and z will be shown by and this distance. Uh, on this axis. So you can think that they, they tells you uh, how, how much uncertainty you still have about the charge of this state. So when this is zero, you will have uh, no uncertainty about your total charge. Okay, since we have the random dynamics and the randomness come from the measurement outcome, so generally we will have a statistical distribution of the Z value. To uh, study this statistically, we use introduce the typical value of z uh, as the order parameter, and the typical value is defined in this form. And when k goes to infinity, k will be the total layer of the tree. Uh, if z typical is still um, positive, we will see that we will stay in a mixed phase or a fuzzy phase, depending on the choice our, of our initial state. And suppose with the k goes to infinity, z typical also approaches to zero, and uh, then we will see that uh, we will have a pure phase or a sharp phase depending on the initial state. So from the plot, you can see that by tuning this measurement probability, we will see the purification transition and the charge sharpening transition. As I mentioned, another advantage about considering the tree model is that it gives more analytical uh, tractability about the uh, phase transition. And we find that uh, by, our problem can be mapped to the uh, phase transition uh, in, of the directed polymers, which has been carefully studied in this work in last century. And by uh, modifying uh, their method, uh, we found that for the purification process, uh, the critical point can be proved to be one over four. And we further show that um, when we are close to the critical point of the purification process, the scaling behaviors will be described by this uh, equation. So we are still in the so-called glass universality class, uh, which is defined uh, in previous work. And for the charge sharpening transition, unfortunately, we find that uh, the, the nonlinear different, different equation described uh, this dynamics uh, is a little more complicated. To my understanding, there has been no uh, math, uh, mathematical solution established yet. But we find that uh, from the numerical calculation, and these two have very close critical point. In the inside, we have a more careful uh, plot about the dynamics in the charge sharpening process. This red dash line will be the curve at one over four. And we further notice that at D equals one, uh, we will just have the cubic degree left. Then the initial state uh, with the maximum state or the initial state with the superposition of B strings just behave like the incoherent uh, mix of the different charge sectors or the coherent superposition of different charge sectors. Then we argue that by taking an average of the uh, random gates and the measurement outcomes, we will cancel the coherence between different charge sectors. 
And then we believe that uh, this char Sharpian transition should coincide with the purification transition. And after we consider a case with d equals one, we go to the case d equals to infinity. As I mentioned, in this case, uh, a nice statistical picture has been established in previous work. And for the purification process, it turns out to be the population of a, a tree, and it will give us the pretty point uh, equals one half. And for the charge sharpening transition, we show that uh, it can be described by the same method we have used in the dynamics of the purification process at d equals one. And we prove that the critical point equals uh, this value. And you can see that it matches well with our numerical calculation. And we further show that the scaling form near this critical point will still be described by the last linear scientific class. So we see that when d goes to infinity, and we have quite different critical points they separated with each other. But on the other hand, we also have seen that at d equals one, they coincide. This suggests that with the increase of d, uh, the critical points will separate and flow to different value with d equals to infinity. To check this, we consider uh, the d value larger than one, but still finite. Here, I gave the plot of our numerical result with d equals two. And in the inside, I plot the two curves uh, at a fixed p equals 0 0.238. From it, you can see that the purification has saturated, but the charge sharpening will decay to uh, minus infinity. This shows that we will have the critical point of separation uh, at d equals two. On the right, I plot all the critical points we have obtained for different choices of d, combining our numerical calculation and uh, analytical derivation. So you can see that with the increase of d, and the critical points they will separate from each other and uh, they will flow to the corresponding value uh, about at, uh, equals to infinity. Okay, sorry, uh, I want to apologize for the for the change of the color between these two points. Uh, sorry for this uh, confusion. And one interesting thing we found is that uh, we also observe a non-monotonic decrease of the critical points when D increase from one to two. This counterintuitive behavior hasn't been fully understood so far. So it requires some further understanding about the dependence of the critical points on D uh, in future work. Okay, so far I talked about our uh, U1 tree model and now let's go to a second part, our uh, quantum tree model with SU2 same tree. This time I will use an expansion tree. And uh, you can see that the system set will grow exponentially to the total layers of the tree. Initially, I will have two QBs in my system. They are coupled with two ancillary QBs in the environment by two bell pairs. And I will use these two ancillary QBs as my probe of the dynamics. I will be interested in the final density matrix. Will it be a mixed state or pure state? Will it have determined total spin or not? Within each node, uh, we will have two input QBs. But as I mentioned, we will increase the system size. So we also have an actual uh, singly the pair from the environment. And these two input qubits will get coupled with the singly the pair by two unitary intelligent gates, which maintain our global SU2 symmetry. And this requires that the intelligent gates will take this general form. PS and PT will the, be the projector of the singly and triple uh, states. And theta will be a random uh, number from a random angle from zero to two pi. To simplify our dynamics, we will fix the gate parameter theta one and theta two. After the intelligent gates, we will have two mid circuit two qubit measurements S1 dot S2, which measures the total spin of the two qubit with probability P. And uh, we will have three parameter to tune P, theta one and theta two. We want to see if we will be able to have the evidence about the phase transition. We first consider the purification process, but we analytically prove that there can be no uh, pure phase due to the triple E projector just naturally give you a mixed state. So this forbid us to get a purification phase transition in our SU2 tree model. Then it forces us to focus on the problem whether we can have the spin sharpening transition in our SU2 tree model. And the answer turns out to be yes. Here we consider a very uh, special case. We take the gate parameter theta one and theta two both equals pi over two. As I have mentioned, the entangling case will take this form. 
Then if theta one and theta two both equal to power two, and the intending gates they become simply the swap gates. It turns out that in this case, the dynamic set creates uh, very quickly. Here we use the quantity R. I will talk about the details uh, later to characterize how sharp the, the face is. Basically, R will, if R equals one, we will have a sharp face. When R is smaller than one, we will still have a statistically uh, fuzzy face. On the right, we plot uh, the saturated value of R with different choice of the measurement probability P. So you can see that when P equals one, we will have R equals one. This suggests that we will have a sharp face at P equals one. But you, we can also see that when P is smaller than one, we never have a sharp face. So, so this suggests we have a spin sharpening transition defined at P equals one. In fact, we can analytically prove that we will have this spin sharpening transition at P equals one uh, in, the, in these choices of the theta one and theta two. Furthermore, we sh further show that and there can be no sharper phase when p is smaller than one. This is proved analytically. So this further limit our problem to whether we can see the spin sharpening transition uh, at p equals one by tuning the gate parameters. We are, we already seen that we can have the spin sharpening transition by tuning p. And one challenge we realize is that uh, for the expansion tree, the dynamics cannot be efficiently simulated not like the collapse process. So uh, what we can use is just the brute force simulation of the dynamics. Our best result gives the uh, dynamics of uh, a expansion tree with 128 qubits in the system and then two unsimilar qubits as the probe. And our result uh, is shown uh, in, in this figure. Here, I want to introduce more details about this quantity R. If we look at the density matrix of the probe qubits for a specific trajectory, it will be proportional to uh, this, this form. Here, sigma and tau can be understood as the conditional probability of your measurement to give you either a singlet or triplet outcome for this specific trajectory. Then we can define the R in this form. Sigma plus tau will be the total probability to get uh, this trajectory. And uh, the, this term will be the tell you the spin fluctuation of this trajectory. When this term is one, we will have zero spin fluctuation. When it's smaller than one, we will have some non-zero spin fluctuation. Then you can see that when r equals one, it means that we have a sharp face. There is no spin fluctuation. When r smaller than one, we basically still have a fuzzy face. So then, if we look at this face diagram, we find that. Most choices of theta one, theta two will give us a sharper face, but there are still some regime. We still have the system to be fuzzy for this financial dynamics. Then we want to ask, okay, what will be the uh, dynamic the result at any time? Will it become sharp or it still remain uh, fuzzy? To answer this question, we try to get some uh, analytical solution. And uh, it turns out that we can still use. Uh, a method, uh, a modified uh, method we have used in the U1 case, but uh, I will not talk about uh, the analytical details here. Uh, I apologize for this. It's kind of complicated. Basically, we sh show that there will still be both sharp face and a fuzzy face, even at k goes to infinity. And the sharp face and the fuzzy face will be uh, separated by a critical boundary, which is determined uh, by this uh, form. Here, I we plot uh, this critical boundary by the red dash line. So surprisingly, we found that it matches well with our direct simulation. So this suggests the validity of our theoretical prediction. And we also check uh, the scaling behaviors when we are close to the critical boundary by uh, tuning theta one and theta two. We still get the glass neurosetic class as we have seen in the U1 um, problem. So combine our uh, numerical result and our theoretical prediction, we believe that there is a spin sharpening transition uh, at p equals one by tuning the gate parameters theta one and theta two. And to better uh, study this, we also consider the minimum value of this uh, uh, diagram with different choices of a system size. Here, k will be the total layers of my expansion tree. But from all the uh, numerically accessible system size, and a simple quadratic fitting, it suggests that 
the minimum value of R will still be smaller than one with K goes to infinity. So this still states that we will have a fuzzy phase. This supports our prediction about the spin sharpening phase transition at P equals one. So we believe that the phase diagram will be the following. We have three parameters, um, P, theta one, and theta two. When P is smaller than one, uh, we will always have the fuzzy phase. But at the plane of, of P equals one, uh, we will have both the sharp phase and the fuzzy phase. And they will be separated by this critical boundary uh, from our analytical solution. Okay, before we talk about the dynamics in our expansion tree uh, with the real measurements, as I have mentioned, the biggest problem is our ability to simulate the dynamics is limited. Then uh, we can ask, can we get some more understanding about this problem? One choice is to consider some alternative distributions of the measurement outcomes. The first one will be the dynamics with forced measurement, which means that during the dynamics, all your mean circuit outcome will be predetermined. And it turns out that in this case, the dynamics can be efficiently very easily, can be efficiently simulated. And we find that no matter the choice of theta one and theta two, uh, the system will always um, be sharp uh, at P equals one. This suggests that the dominant part will be the sharp trajectories in the ensemble of our uh, trajectories. And another case is to consider uh, some uh, non boolean rule uh, measurement probability, which will be controlled by a replica number n. When n is equals one, it will recover the probability in the real measurement case. And using this uh, new uh, distribution Pn, we can define a new quantity Rn to characterize how sharp our system is uh, in this new distribution. It turns out uh, Rn can be expressed by a series of quantity uh, Xin, and each one will be represented by the summation of the uh, power of sigma and the power of tau. And we further find that uh, the recursive relations of uh, this uh, Xin can be efficiently simulated, which means that as long as n is integer and larger or equal to two, uh, the dynamics of this non boolean rule uh, distribution can also be efficiently simulated. And we further find that all the numerically accessible uh, n larger than or equal to two give very similar results. So this uh, makes it safe to consider the result at n equals to two. Here, we plot the uh, result at n equals to two. And you can see that most choice of theta one and theta two give us a sharp phase. This result is obtained at a large enough uh, system size. However, but we still have uh, some choices of theta one and theta two, uh, which give us a uh, fuzzy phase. And the interesting thing we, we see is that now the fuzzy phase show a pattern asymmetric. This is quite different from the symmetric pattern we have seen in the real memory case. So then this makes us to ask, is this asymmetry just some structure belong to this uh, non boolean rule distribution, or it still exists in the dynamics with the real measurement? To answer this, uh, we check the anti symmetric, anti symmetric uh, phase diagram with real measurements. And this is uh, achieved by first reflecting our phase diagram uh, with real measurements around this black dashed line, and then we calculate the difference between the phase diagram before and after this reflection. And interesting thing is that we recover this symmetric pattern uh, in this anti symmetric uh, result using the dynamics uh, with, with real measurements. And we further find that uh, this asymmetry doesn't belong to just uh, the fuzzy phase or the sharp phase. It is something shared by both the sh uh, sharp phase and the fuzzy phase. So this uh, means that some actual analytical understanding is needed to fully understand this additional pattern. On the right, we plot the maximum of uh, the fist diagram um, of this anti symmetrized uh, fist diagram with different uh, system size. So it says that uh, it will reach uh, a non zero value when k goes to infinity. This also supports our prediction that there will still be a fuzzy phase when k goes to infinity. So, so far, all our finite simulation um, uh, support our theoretical prediction. 
So we believe uh, that there will be a spin sharpening transition at p equals one, and which will be uh, uh, which will which will give the critical boundary uh, using our numerical uh, using our theoretical prediction. Okay, uh, I talked about our main results about the charge sharpening phase transition and the spin sharpening phase transition, but there are still many interesting problems and leaving for future work. For the charge sharpening phase transition, one direct question is that can we exactly solve um, this phase transition in mass at b equals one? As I have mentioned. It has a, a slightly different uh, recursive relation from the purification process. Maybe uh, some method can be developed in math to uh, give us the exact solution, uh, including the critical points and the uh, scaling exponents. And another question will be, can we understood this non-expected uh, non-monotonic tonic uh, uh, behavior of the critical points? And this requires some analytical understanding about the dependence of critical points on D. For the spin sharpening uh, phase transition, um, the question can be, we can ask, can we understand uh, this asymmetry of the order parameters revealed by the two replica distribution? Also, uh, before we discuss the phase transition uh, at p equals one, but we also have this extra axis is p. When p approach to one, we will, can we also obtain the scaling exponents? Uh, this is also an interesting question. At the end, uh, I want to uh, say it may be interesting to study the spin sharpening transition in some experimental protocol. There has been uh, some experimental evidence about the charge sharpening transition in 1D circuit. I think it will be interesting to realize our spin sharpening transition in the tree models. Okay, uh, now let me uh, summarize my today's talk. So basically, I showed that uh, using the tree structure, it will, it will enable more analytical control and numerical access, access about the quantum dynamics with either U1 symmetry or non abelian SU2 symmetry. For the charge sharpening transition, I uh, showed that the tree uh, model can give us uh, some further understanding about it. And uh, for the spin sharpening transition, I believe that uh, we gave the first analytical solution about it. As I have mentioned, our paper has been posted on archive. So if you are interested in, um, please uh, read uh, our paper for uh, more details. Okay, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, I'm ready to give questions. Any questions? Hi, Xiao Xiao, good talk. Hi, Brian. Um, I, I have a simple question, well, maybe a simple, I don't know. Um, you talked about the D equals infinity limit and you said that the um, purification transition is at p equals one half, which makes sense. That's just when you have fewer than one descendant on the tree on average. Yes. Um, and then you said that the charge sharpening transition is at one minus square root two over two. Yes. Do you have a simple argument for that? I mean, there should be some classical reason for that. Oh yeah, this is this is uh, the this is this is just the the, the constrained. Uh, a uh, simple experiment process on a tree. So it is, yeah. And on each node, you, you, you will have, you can kind of think this like uh, the, the growth of, of a, a polymer. You can think your, your chart like some random worker. So this kind of recovers the, the picture of, of the direct uh, directed polymer. So that's why you can still use the same method as uh, we have used to study this chart sharpening transition. Uh, sorry, can you say that a little explicit, more explicitly? Constrained simple exclusion process on a tree. Yeah. What should I think about? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think of single exclusion, simple exclusion process as like some particles moving on a lattice or something, oh, and they can't pass through each other. Okay. Yes. So basically, uh, for for each entangled node, uh, you can think it's a two input uh, chart as two random uh, random workers, and they, you know, they, they can just simply cross each other or they just, just go in the same way the equal probability. Mm -hmm. And but if you have a measurement, then you, it's like you fix uh, the charge at this time step on this side. So only the workers with the same charge can pass this measurement. So it's like a constraint you have to uh, satisfy about your uh, random worker. So if, if you just have a gate, it will be a simple experiment. Each random worker has an equal probability to jump to the left and to the right. 
But now you have this uh, measurement, so you have the constraint. Uh, the work curve is the, the drawn chart cannot jump to this side at the time, time steps. So this defines the uh, simple uh, constraint simply equivalent size. And for mm -hmm. the tree, it, it's the same problem. Just, you know, we have this uh, projection measurement we discard qubits. So some random workers, they will stop when they touch this uh, project QB. So some worker, if they, they touch uh, this side at this time, they will just stop there. They, they, they should have the, the exact charge shown by this outcome. Mm -hmm. And some worker, they, they can keep, keep uh, moving uh, in the system, but they also have to match uh, this outcome. So workers have the, the, the drawn chart, they will not be able to pass this. They, they have auto, auto to stop at some, some place. So this uh, is kind of, so just uh, you have the tree and you have this kind of constraints uh, mm -hmm. about, about the charge. So it's kind of like um, the of, of the growth of the direct polymer. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we, okay. we can use the same uh, method to, to and he solve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you are welcome. Uh, sorry. Okay, I have another question, but I'll let someone else ask first. Hi. So, uh, I have one question. Can I ask? Sure. Right sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, before, like in the SU two paper, it was mentioned that uh, the sharpening transition and uh, the entanglement transition for SU two case happens to be at the same critical point. Uh, so could you comment? Uh, and also there was another point about uh, uh, the sharpening happens to be present, uh, it, like the time scale is L cube in the fuzzy phase and L square in the sharpened phase. Yes. So one question is like, can you from your protocol give some idea about the time scales? Like, uh, can you go to, so what's the depth of your circuit uh, for which you evolve? And do you believe that the sharpening and uh, uh, entanglement transition for SU2 case will coincide? Okay, so this is this is a very, very good question. We consider this, yes, as you said uh, in, the, in the previous 1D SU2 uh, um, paper, and uh, these two transitions, they coincide. And we, we proved that in our case, uh, there will be uh, no uh, uh, purification phase transition. And why we do not, I think this is an example that the uh, uh, the purification transition and the sharpening transition they no longer coincide uh, with, e with each other, and um, I do not have very we do not find a very uh, clever idea about why this uh, coincide uh, coincidence disappears in the tree. Maybe it's due to the tree has uh, some weird structure compared to the the one D uh, system, and yeah, for the uh, the sharpening transition in the one D, uh, yeah, this is a fuzzy phase and there will be a critical phase. We believe that uh, in the tree model, this critical phase will shrink to the the sharp critical point we we have discussed. So the we will ha we will have on the axis of uh, of the p. So we we think that uh, this this part will be will correspond to the the previous the sharp fire phase people have uh, uh, observed in the one D case and the previous uh, critical phase will shrink to uh, uh, this uh, critical point. Okay, and what about the depth of the circuit? So can you, uh, so what's the depth do you go to for okay. like fuzzy and soft phase? Oh, the, the, the depth of the circuit? Yeah. yeah. So you, you can see that uh, our um, system set will grow exp exponentially with the increase of the total depth. So we will ha have exponential exponential growth of the total system size. Uh, our uh, best uh, brute force uh, simulation gives the tree with uh, 128 qubits uh, at the final time. So uh, it will be a tree with uh, uh, six uh, total steps. All right, okay, yeah, this, this, is a, this is the best uh, we can uh, simulate uh, numerically. Thanks. Thank you. Any any other question?
Okay, if I can go back to the first tree model you presented, where you had some analytical solutions for the purification transition, but not for the charge sharpening transition. Yes. Uh, yeah, here. Um, so, I mean, numerically, can you tell whether the same sort of critical behavior applies near the charge sharpening transition? Do you get the same exponential dependence of Z on, the, on P? Do you get the same one third exponent? Does it look like it could be the same or does it look like it's different? Okay, this this is also a good good question. Uh, it it seems to be uh, kind of uh, similar, uh, but uh, as uh, you know, it it is not easy in numerical calculation to efficiently locate uh, this uh, exponents. So uh, we are not quite sure whether they are exactly the same or just some slightly different scaling behaviors. That's why we do not include them uh, in, in our results. Yeah, since we cannot solve this situation. Analytically, and um, you know, we may have some uh more scaling behavior close to the glass universal class, but it may have some uh <laughs> weird difference. We are not quite sure yet. So this requires some further understanding about uh, the charge sharpening transition, yeah, especially some method to solve this uh, uh recursive relation analytically. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any, any other question? Okay, uh, if no, I, I think I can uh, safely uh, stop uh, uh, today's talk. And uh, uh, thank you very much for coming to my uh, talk. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so if you are interested uh, in, in my work, uh, please read our papers. I, I'm also uh, glad to talk with you in more details through email or in person. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you.